Hey everybody, what are we gonna make today? Well, I have picked from my garden a whole bunch of fresh basil. This stuff smells amazing. I've got probably about eight cups of it right now. So we're gonna make homemade pesto, which is gonna be exciting. I'm gonna use a recipe, I'll share the link in the section. But these are the walnuts that I had from last year. We're gonna use walnuts, not pine nuts, because that's what I have. You can also use cashews and other any kind of nut product. This is what I currently have. I've got some garlic, I've got some olive oil, and I've got some Parmesan. So I'm going to have to crack a whole bunch of nuts because I need about two cups worth of nuts, eight cups, uh, six to eight cups of uh, basil, which I do have, and then I'll have to figure out the rest, and then I'll just go you through the process when I'm done. So this is my nut cracker, and I'm just going to... Get the meat out of the walnuts. See, I let them dry long enough. Everything is good. Make sure I don't have any shells. And then I'm just going to put them in a bowl. And that's what I'm going to do. So, one thing about cracking nuts, you got to be careful you don't get any of the shells in there because nobody wants to eat shells. You just want to eat the meat. I'm going to have to invest in one of those, I don't know if it's what you call them, but nut picks or whatever because I don't have one. And you know some of this meat is a little hard to get out so I tried a fork and the fork kind of works but I'm gonna have to invest in one of those so when you're doing walnuts too I just want to show you I'm cracking them obviously and then there's some of them that aren't good and that's okay this so that's kind of what they look like on the inside so you just toss those away it's not gonna hurt anything and just go on to the next one and you have this last one which is a good walnut that comes out so good bad you just got to toss out the ones that are not good okay so here's my two cups of walnuts and I got a huge bag of holes and that's for a different video what we can do with the walnut holes holes excuse me holes so we're gonna get started on making the basil basil only takes like 10 minutes to make it's super easy I forgot to say we also need lemon juice and sea salt and a food processor so hang on Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, you need, um, I'm like tripling, quadrupling this recipe. So um, the instructions on the amounts in this recipe is different than what I'm going to be posting because I'm like four times in it. So you're going to need some freshly grated Parmesan. Now you can buy it freshly grated if you want. I prefer not to buy my cheese grated because when they grate the cheese, they put a coating on it um, to keep it from sticking together, which adds carbs. Um, but also it's not so great for you. So I'm not going to shred it. I'm going to put it in my food processor. I'm going to pulse it so it gets all nice and crumbly. So hang on. So this is kind of the texture that you want if you're not doing the shredded stuff, if you're doing it yourself. And you can make it a little chunkier if you want. I'm also going to pre-crush my walnuts a little bit so it's a little bit easier. So hang on. Okay, and that's the texture of my nuts right now. So then we're going to get into putting the basil in there and everything else. So just a second, I'm going to move this aside. This also allow you to like measure it out. Um, I'm going to just kind of wing it kind of measure it out. So hang on. So I'm doing my garlic, and there's many different ways you can do the garlic. I have this like little rubber bowl thing. Just throw my garlic cloves in there like that. I'm going to roll it on the table. I just take it between my hands. And it takes, for the most part, it takes the skin off. Other people put it in a mason jar and they shake it up really heavy and do it that way. Um, I'll smash them on the table and peel them off that way. It's however you want to do your garlic is a good thing. Okay, there's our garlic roughly chopped up. And then we're going to put everything into the food processor and get it going and then we're going to slowly add in our olive oil. It calls for a cup and a half and so we're probably going to put in almost three cups of olive oil. And this is going to yield us um, two and a half cups of pesto which is a lot of pesto and you can't can pesto because of the cheeses in it. I guess some people could but I don't. Um, so you can refrigerate it for up to about a week or I'm going to put some of these here and I'm going to make it in the freeze. I'm going to freeze them and then I'll pop them out of here and put them in a bag. And then as I need pesto, I'll have a serving size of pesto for whatever I want. My kitchen is kind of a mess right now, so I'm still using the same thing. So I'm not worried about that. So I'm just going to stuff all of my 
my basil in here. And you know what? I'm using stems, leaves, everything. It won't hurt you. It's okay to use the stems. Now, some people may say, don't use the stems. So we're going to get everything in there. Okay. We're going to pour in the garlic cloves. And since I'm like doubling plus this recipe, I have half a cup of lemon juice. I'm doing about teaspoon, tablespoon of salt, give or take. And you can put in red peppers if you want. So I'm going to pulse this down a little bit, then I'm going to add my nuts and my cheese. Okay, so here we go. We pulsed it till it has some texture. I might have pulsed it a little bit too long. But I'm going to take a quick taste. Mm. I love pesto. It is so good. So now what I'm going to do, it's got a little kick to it too. Um, and so I didn't put parsley in this. There's some recipes that have parsley in their pesto recipe. This one does not. So hang on. So scrape it off. And it doesn't look like the store bought. It's not as green. Um, Got the oil in here. Hang on. I'll bring it out so you guys can take a look at it. All right. So this. Oh, this is what it looks like. Okay. And honestly, to me, it's really good. Mm. It'd be so good on pizza, on chicken. I'm tasting. I'm trying to see if there's a difference between the walnut and the pine. And there's a little bit of a difference of a taste, but not enough to be an issue. So then I have these. This is one way I'm going to store it. I just got my little ice cream scoop here. We'll see how much. I'm going to fill these to the top. So it looks like each one takes about two, maybe a little bit less. Let's see. All right, so hang on. Guys, that was like the perfect amount to fill this whole tray. And I'm just, mm. that's so good. You guys use Romano cheese in there. You can also take your walnuts or whatever nut you're having and you can toast them. That would give it a little bit richer uh, flavor. But here we go, guys. Now we're gonna throw these in the freezer. And this will probably take a couple hours to freeze up. Um, they're not completely flat all the way around and that's fine because then I'm going to pop them out and I put them in freezer bags like I said and then I'll have individual servings of my pesto. So hang on. So I'll come back in a couple hours to finish this video up. I'm sorry I'm just eating my pesto. It's so good. And um, I will show you what it looks like after it gets done in the freezer and how I store it and we'll come back a little bit later. Hey, good morning. It's the next day. We're going to finish up the pesto that I did yesterday. So here it is out of the freezer. And I left it in there all day because it gets really crumbly. But I'm just popping this up. And so now I have a nice little frozen thing of pesto. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some wax paper. I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to roll it up. This is a lot of wax paper. And then I just have a baggie here, and I'm going to keep it stored in this bag. Um, you don't necessarily have to wax, mix it in wax paper. I guess you could just put it in there without it. Um, I'm just going to do it so it keeps separate. So I'm going to do this, and I'll be right back. All right. So here we go. I've got this much pesto, and again, you can put it in the fridge and have it fresh for up to seven days when you make it fresh. Um, seven or eight days, somewhere in there. Um, you don't want to can this or have it shelf stable. I know they do it in the grocery stores, but there's a, you know, I'm just not going to do it that this, that this way. Um, so mine is frozen. So anytime I need some, I'm just going to come out, grab some, and then we'll be good to go. I'll talk to you later.